Okay. Um, I will take roll call. Uh, when I call your name, say present or here. Michael? Here. Carol? Here. Patty? Here. Rod? Here. Kristen? Here. Christina? Here. Okay. Very good. Okay. Um, before we start, um, our new select board liaison is going to be Matt Johnson. He makes you know, briefly. So he said he had another meeting this afternoon, so he might not make it. Just so you know who we have. I think he'll be really good. I think he's very enthusiastic. Yeah. I'm sorry. So did you say the new liaison is, is Matt Johnson? Matt Johnson, yes. And he may join us. Okay. Um, did everyone have a chance to review the minutes? Yes. Any changes? Okay, so vote to accept the minutes. Michael? Yes. Yes. Uh, Carol? Yes. Patty? Yes. Rod? Yes. Kristen? Yep. Christina? Yes. Lana? Yes. Okay, minutes approved. Uh, Ginger, would you like to do your report? Yep, happy to. So first off, I wanted to give you a bit of an update on the recruitment for the administrative assistant position that we're, that we're currently uh, looking for a candidate for. Hello. Hi, <laughs> I'm a guest. I was in touch with somebody here yeah. um, about maybe participating. Fantastic. Thank you. What, what is your name? It's Catherine Young. Oh, hi, I'm Carol Ann. Hi, Carol Ann. Yes, thank you. We have a couple of uh, members joining by Zoom. Okay, thank you. Uh, and can I just ask for the spelling of your name? Was it Catherine? A A T H R Y N Hanley. H A N as in Nancy, L E Y. Respected board member. H A N as in Nancy, L E Y. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to stop for one second and just introduce. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm Carol Ann. I'm the chair. Uh, I've been on the board for five years. So, <laughs> okay, around this way. Rob? I'm Rob Rydell, member of the board, and this is my first year participating. And I'm Patty Keene, also a member of the board. Um, and it turns out both Carol and I, this is either our last or our second to last meeting. We've been on six years of each of us. Hi, I'm Carol Fishing. Harlan Reed, just a member of the public watching. Ah, okay. Also a prospective board member. Okay. <laughs> I'm Ginger Quarles, I'm the COA director. And you two guys on the Zoom, you want to introduce yourselves? Sure. Um, I'm Christina Kendrick and I'm on the board. This is my second term. And I'm Kristen Nelson, also on the board. Thank you. I'm Michael Red. I'm working on six years. So I too am going up this year. Okay. Oh, thanks, everybody. Yeah. So I was just getting ready to start my report. I'm starting with the fact that uh, we have an empty administrative assistant position is a key position in our organization. Our administrative assistant actually took a job in the town clerk's office, which um, we're happy for her. She was excited to learn a new uh, a new thing within municipal government, a new job, but uh, has left a big hole for us. So whether we're in the middle of a recruitment, so I'm just giving them a bit of an update on that. So, um, you know, the labor market out there is tough. I think everybody knows that um, there's way more um, you know, jobs available, then there are people to fill them in many, many industries. And that certainly is proving to be the case here. Um, you know, we, we did, um, I think we got a little over 20 applicants, um, but, and we selected some that we wanted to interview, but lots of times as fast as I called them to invite them for an interview, um, they would be informing me that they'd already taken another position uh, someplace else. And, and in some cases, I actually have been scheduled for an interview 
and you know, like an interview two days later, and they would call and withdraw um, before we could even get to the interview. So, um, for some positions, this is just um, the job offers are coming left and right for the best candidates. Um, so we we have interviewed a few people. We did have a top candidate that we were going after, um, and she withdrew yesterday morning. Um, when she let her current employer know that she was thinking of leaving, leaving they sweetened the pot. And, uh, you know, because she's a top performer, we knew she'd be one here for us too. So of course yeah. they were motivated to keep her. So you're happy for her, but um, this just keeps happening to us. I think we've had at least five people withdraw that were, you know, um, on the um, at least had passed enough through the phases to be, in the first round interview, and in some cases, on the verge of being invited for a second round interview. Um, we are going to do two more first round interviews this week, and then hoping that we, from a very small pool, that we can come up with one or two candidates to move on to the second round. If that does not work, then we will have to start over again. Is the main problem the financial one? No. It's not that we're offering a low. No. No, not so far. I mean, people are withdrawing just because they've already gotten other work. We haven't even gotten to the stage where we're, you know, negotiating, you know, um, a starting starting pay. Um, the starting pay is advertised and very clear. So, you know, the, theoretically, know people would not I be see. applying if they were not willing to be working within a particular range uh, that we listed. So I don't think that's the problem. It's just there's so many choices out there and that good folks are being snapped up. So we will keep plugging away on that. Um, wanted to let you know that it did have a meeting with the new public health director. Her name is Melanie. Um, it was a nice first meeting. Uh, got to know each other, gave her a little bit of a tour here. We spent a decent amount of time talking about COVID and the various precautions that we have taken during the pandemic and, and what our current policy is right now, which remains that um, you must be fully vaccinated, including a booster, and you have to provide proof of that to be without a mask, you know, at, at events that go on here. Yeah. So that's our current policy. Um, it will be hard for us to defend that if anyone questions it, because no other town building has that policy. Um, so um, we feel it's important, uh, given the vulnerable population that we serve and the public health director you know, concurred that it was a, a very appropriate, cautious stance to take, but also said it could be difficult to, to Have you defend. had to enforce that in any way? What's that? Have you had to enforce that in any um, way by someone? Well, enforce it as in, I did notice somebody who I happen to know is not vaccinated, sign up to and attend a, a function that involved a meal and they took off their mask to consume the meal. And I did have to call that person and let them know that you know, they would always be welcome to come uh, to anything we had and to be masked up. Um, and then we'd be happy to send them home with a meal, but they couldn't unmask to consume the meal. So yes, I have had to. And that was okay? Well, it was with this person, they okay. accepted it, but you know. You just don't know now. You don't know um, how other people might respond. So that's where we stand with that. Um, I was going to let you know that the, uh, Friends uh, sponsored a drive through luncheon for 200 people um, this past week. Um, it was on a beautiful spring day. They provided a lovely bag along with a geranium plant and the and the catered meal. And we, I also asked them if they'd be willing to supply an extra 20 geranium plants for me to give to the outreach team for them to take to shut-ins. And so they've been working on delivering those this, this past week and we're grateful for that. Um, we are uh, working on our, I, last month I reported that we are working on converting to Office 365. Um, the whole town will eventually be converting to that. We are one of the first departments to do that and we've had some individualized training with that this past week to learn about SharePoint and Teams and OneDrive and all these things that for many people here, this is the first time they're hearing of it. And it's going reasonably well. There's glitches, of course, and there's bumps. And we have quite a diverse um, uh, set 
of familiarity with the computer. So for some folks, it's easier than others. But we're, we're, we're making progress. Um, we also are going to be having something or have had it installed now on our computers. Um, it's, a, it's a soft phone technology. This is going to help us when we need to work from home. Most of you know that during the pandemic, when we had to work, we were working from home for about two months, two and a half months, maybe, before we were back in the office. And it was very challenging for us to make calls to clients because we didn't want to use our private cell phones or our home phones um, to protect our, you know, our, our, our identity and our privacy. And we had a number of different technological ways to try to make these calls. And eventually we had a number we had to call in and put in a code and then you could dial us. It was very complicated, it was very cumbersome. Um, and in some cases, I know some of my staff just gave up and called, called on their on their phone, you know. So um, this soft phone will actually be able to allow us to make a telephone call using our computers. Um, and the phone number, you know, would be generated from what looks like to the caller a copy phone number and protects workers' anonymity um, in terms of their private phone numbers. Uh, so we just got the, all that installed last week on our computers. We haven't had to work from home then. That tends to be unless something else happens related to the pandemic and another shutdown, this would mainly be used when we had a snow day. It used to be when you had a snow day, it was sort of a free day off. Um, you didn't have to come to work and you, and you didn't have to work. But now the expectation is when we have a snow day, you are expected to be working from home for that whole day. So um, the, um, this is when the soft phones will really be put to the test when we're actually working from home and making those calls from our, from our computers. So we're, we're working on that. Um, just to go back to COVID for a minute, you know, the cases are definitely rising. If, if, if any of you are tracking any of those numbers, they've been going up every week for the last, I didn't bring it in here, but I would say at least six weeks. Um, so they, they are rising, um, but as of yet, there's no particular, um, directive from the town manager's office or from the Board of Health indicating, you know, going back to mask mandates or social distancing or anything like that. Um, but it, it is a little concerning how, how they just go up every week. There's been no plateau. It just continues to go up right now. So I think that's most of what I wanted to bring to your attention. If people have questions about other things, I'm happy to take questions. I was just going to say, at the same time, people wearing masks is going down. I usually am the only person. I usually wear one inside, mm -hmm. but I'm usually the only person with one on. And so this is quite nice to see everybody mask. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes places in Concord are like that. A lot of people do masks. Yeah. yeah. Did you want to say something, Kristen? Yeah, I just have a question. I mean, it's an anecdotal question as you're talking about COVID numbers rising, which are really going crazy around Concord. I agree. Are you seeing um, any worse outcomes? Like, I feel like I'm not hearing in all these numbers about worse outcomes um, because of boosting and double boosting, but are you hearing of any significant poor outcomes? Um. I think most of what I would have would be anecdotal in terms of who I know about that's got COVID or has gotten it and, and how they did with it. Um, I'd say in general, you know, people are um, less, there's less death and less severe illness as is being reported in the media, you know, um, but I don't have hard facts about how it's affecting participants here. Um, I do know that when someone found out there was someone at a lunch that um, was not vaccinated and had their mask off, they informed me that they would not be coming to any more meals here because they were unhappy that we had not caught that, if you will. You know, there, there's only so much I can do. I don't have the staffing to run around and question everybody that's here for every event. Um, you know, in terms of their vaccination status. Um, so I, it is affecting people's desire to be here. Let's put it that way. 
with the numbers rising and then occasionally finding out that someone here is not following the rules and is unmasking even though they're unvaccinated is causing them not to want to be here. Yeah, I've been impressed with a lot of um, senior living communities, not just around Concord, but around the state where um, there are rising numbers, but again, it is anecdotal, but it is also reflected in the national numbers that there are not significant poor outcomes. And so they are really trying to continue to encourage um, seniors to participate in the activities. I mean, yes, mask when there are groups, but to not kind of go back to where we were because it's not the severe outcomes that we had two years ago. I work in, um, I work in long-term care, remember, and our numbers are going up with staff. The residents have been fine, but the staff numbers are going way up. And the outcome has been generally just a few days of feeling poorly. I'm anxious to see now because a few staff members have it in their household and their unvaccinated family members are getting it. And I'm just gonna see what happens because some of them are not in the best of health. And I'm curious to see how that plays out. So I'll let you know. So, so Ginger, just a, a couple of comments. The, getting the software set up so that you can make phone calls if you have to come home in the event that we do have another surge in the autumn, which mm -hmm. is anticipated if of any time that it would be the time, particularly here for a surge, coupled with the trend of these new variants, each variant is becoming progressively more contagious. I think this most recent one was reported to be as contagious as measles, which is the most contagious virus, viral disease that, that, that we currently deal with. Um, that and uh, the uncertainty about um, uh, the so-called long COVID effects, uh, which may only manifest themselves uh, several months or, or longer later. So that's the background that I, I wanted to state um, as the basis for the following question. This is fantastic that you've gotten the technology installed to, so that people can call from home. As a contingency basis, is there anything else and that we could help you with getting from the town that would be a contingency basis? So if you had to go back to working remotely to provide services for the seniors, you would have it uh, by the autumn. Is there anything that we can help you with? Um, I think, what, I mean, one of the things was that none of us had any laptops. Um, so all of us were forced to use our personal computer equipment, if you will, from home that whole time, which is not ideal. And then we were having the problems with the phones. Now, every single staff member has been issued a laptop and our desktops have gone away. Mm -hmm. And so when you know you're gonna go work from home because it's predicted we're gonna have a snow day the next day, you take your laptop home. So you've got everything you would have if you were in the office. And then we've got the phone thing being worked out. Um, you know, we've got the L technology, we've got Zoom, we have, should we have to do this again? Um, we are so much better prepared, you know? Um, and um, so I appreciate that question. Um, you know, there may be something else that I don't even know, it's not even been invented yet. Well, but, no, I, <laughs> but as far as I know, <laughs> we have, we will have what we need okay. should this happen again. Um, not that we didn't do it before, it was just at risk to our our privacy uh, and our um, using our own personal equipment, which isn't right to ask employees to But do if that. everyone has the same laptop, same model laptop, you can download, a, you know, if there's a software fix for something, it can be, Absolutely. you know, administered to everyone, everyone can get it. Right. So that's great. So, okay, so thank you for the answer. Good. So you've got the phone calls going out that are uh, sort of anonymous, but how about if people call here yeah, and it, they're it, not here? It'll it's, ring. On them. It'll ring okay. Even right now, after they installed that on my computer, and I sit at my desk, my phone is ringing, so is my computer. It's a little, <laughs> it's a little confusing. A little, I have to figure it out. There might be a way to shut it off on my computer. Um, it's brand new. I'm still figuring it out. But, but yeah, I'm, okay. you know, 
it should, a if place. all goes well, it a hasn't place. been put to the test yet. Um, you know, our computers will be ringing at home with incoming calls. Okay. And they should be able to transfer the call, just as if I was sitting in the office, to, to whoever the call is for. And then that person's computer will ring. That person's extension, which is now on their computer, will ring. So um, we had to get, IT had to get special licenses for each of the people that were having Everyone. soft phones. And basically my whole staff, with the exception of the drivers and the custodian, all have it now. So it's the same number. Thank you. Thank you so much. And what, I'm sorry just to beat this issue, but does everybody have the appropriate internet access from their homes so that this all the system will be functioning? And if that if they don't, is there something we can do to advocate for that? At the time? And it, because we did go through that, there wasn't anybody on the staff that didn't have any okay. access. Okay. But, not, but whoever get, you hire, and I Could really be. hope you do get someone mm -hmm. soon to help you with that. It's okay. something we have to, we actually did end up during, when we were working from home, two employees did not have a computer equipment. We had to check them out of town laptop um, to be able to work from home, which we did. Exactly. But now they have a, a a work issued laptop. Shouldn't have to do that again. Other questions from anybody? Okay, thanks. Uh, liaison reports. Does everyone need to cover you? Are there any questions? I just want to thank Terry for going to the um, for how helpful it and reporting about it. Mm -hmm. And I also wanted to comment, this is just the way it falls. It, their meeting is usually the same day as ours, but 7 p.m. So when you get the report from everyone, it goes into the next one. It's sort of old news is what it is because of the way that falls. But, um, for example, tonight they are having a meeting, really brief one though, um, but it's about mosquito spray and whether or not um, they will recommend to the select board to opt out. Because um, the state now requires that cities and towns are officially are required to vote opt out of mosquito. Right. So the board, it has to be an official thing now. The board's going to discuss that and make a decision. Wow. Yeah. I don't know how many towns are going through that question. Still going to be required to spray for mosquitoes unless you opt out? I, I think that I, they have to discuss it, vote, and make a recommendation to the select board for final approval if we want it locked out. Apparently. I would think that'll be a contentious issue to discuss, um, but they're only, they're saying the meeting because it's only one issue will go from seven to 7.30. So maybe they're all on the same page and maybe it's been discussed already. I don't know, around town. I don't know. I haven't heard of it being discussed or that's just a matter of interest I want to say. Thanks. The question about COVID is the 60 and 50 years old. Terry. Yes. Um, just a, a men's coffee here. Yes. There was somebody who wanted to join COVID at the early 60s. Yes. They have no computer. A no smartphone. They have no computer and what? No, no smartphone. smartphone. How can they join? Is it like this is mentioned at the time? All communications <coughs> are um, through email. And, and on the internet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I I would say that the the we should give them the, uh, the membership. Uh, Maureen Kimball is the membership uh, person. 
And so I take a direct communication to her. They could just send an email. They can't. So they can't. Yeah. Well, that's right. It's a regular phone. Well, that's it. Just go to the library. Go to the library and use the yeah. terminal at the email library. In the library. Yeah. But then they have to go to the library to check. Well, that's no smartphones. Do they have yeah. this one email? No. I thought he said no one can that too. You know, I think Anne and Pam have talked about that initially, that there were a lot of people who didn't use the internet. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they said. So, Michael, he has no internet access at all. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. So then uh, there aren't, there are some programs that are in person, but a lot of the programs are all. Online also. Oh, yeah. least, so the, what, the purpose so, of joining is might be limited for it. There's a walking yeah. group. There are some other things that people do get together, but um, yeah, it's hard. It, that brings up another question. Maybe this is not right. What about training people to use these smartphones? Training people? To use smartphones. Well, they, the tech tutors that we have. They will do that. They'll do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they get an appointment, um, an afternoon appointment with one of the high schoolers, and it can be for well, anything. One of the adults. Are they, are they I'm adults a tech now? now That's right. That's right. <laughs> Doesn't well, have to be like an afternoon. Yeah, I do. Right. <laughs> uh, and they do do everything from Kindles to iPads to smartphones to computers. It doesn't. Okay. It doesn't have to be a computer. So I see if they maybe are interested in getting an expensive phone and learning how to use it. Yes. Or, or just an iPad. An iPad would be good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, they use it for everything. Yeah. 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 Simpler. Anyway, whatever. There's probably a lot of resistance from people like that who just don't want it and or feel they can't learn it. Right. I would assume at this point. But they might not want to pay for any access. Right. Oh, that's true. Is this yeah. personal by living alone or no family member? As far as I understand, yes. Yes. And you don't need internet access to the commission. Phone services. Commission service for what? Yeah, it's expensive. Well, it goes to places that have a Wi Fi connection, like the library. Yes. They download the information. And actually, it's less expensive than. Well, it's perfect in Okay, you just use your phone server. Right. Okay. But it would depend on how much data you were using. Oh, I have all kinds of data. But those kinds of more expensive lectures. No, I use consumer server. It's, it's expensive. Okay. And they all switch. Yes. I mean, I think I paid like 24 bucks. Really? Yes. I still think this. <laughs> Or I have a phone. All right. Can I ask? It, it's a little bit hard to follow a back and forth conversation. So, is there an ultimate? So, Michael, you're saying there's somebody who wants to join Concord after 60 but has no computer, internet. So, can they? So, is there any final uh, recommendation as to what they should do? The recommendation was to call the membership secretary. To see what they can do. If they, um, I can't, they can't expect the membership center to phone them every time there's something going on. So I don't know how it would work. Thank you. But there's a plan, right, Terry? If they have a schedule of events and things that are going they on. They do have a that. schedule of events and whatnot. But, you know, again, all of that goes out through the uh, through the internet. Uh, or maybe they would print it. and somebody would take responsibility for print and mailing somebody a copy that didn't have internet access to have the schedule. I, I think this is an agenda item for the next select committee meeting, <laughs> which will be the second Tuesday of June. And um, we can take it up at that point. And in the meantime, uh, 
uh, you can get a Maureen Kimball's information. I don't have it, Maureen, at this okay. point. And then we just put your email to me. If you give me the name of the person or. Oh, if you email it to me, I'll give it to them. Okay. And how do I mail it to you? What's your email? MJ Wright. Excuse me, MG? MJ. Oh, I'm only. Um, not the mailing list. Okay, all right. Fine. You're saying this could be raised at the next Concord after 60 meeting? Yes. Yeah. Which is the second Tuesday of uh, June. Yeah, sorry. I thought you said select board meeting. Well, well it's a select good. committee <laughs> of the Concord after 60 group. Okay. Yes. They don't have a board of directors. Mm. Okay. Are there any other questions about the liaison report? Okay. Oh, okay. I didn't attend the May meeting at the Peg Access. Oh, Carlin might have something to share. Okay. Carlin Reed, I'm chair of the Peg Access Committee. I'm, of course, just watching here, but um, at our May meeting, we talked about uh, the upcoming request for proposal, which is the contract precursor to renew the cable franchise agreement with Comcast cable TV service. We're sending out a proposal. We've already issued it um, asking uh, for bids from a cable TV consultant who would then help our committee and the select board um, negotiate the contract with Comcast. And that was the main thing we talked about at uh, the main meeting. We also touched on briefly um, giving out a set of awards again this year, like we did last year for the Peg Access Award. And we'll be presenting them, uh, it'll be a staff recognition type of approach. And that'll be done, given out at the June meeting. Um, also at the June meeting, we're going to be actually selecting the RFP consultant. And if the Council of Aging has a representative to send to that meeting, you'll be able to participate in that consultant selection process, which you really is on. I'm still probably a liaison until the end of June, right? So we're going to the June 2nd meeting. June yeah. 2, 3 o'clock. It'll be in person and hybrid. June 2 at 3 o'clock. Okay. <laughs> I'll send you the Thanks, Carol. I'll be, That's on, it. I'll be on California time, so it'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll work. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, I did not make it to the last chair of breakfast, so I have nothing to report on that. Um, I do want to point out that we are losing members at the end of this year. So Carol, Patty, and Michael, and possibly Kristen. Although, Kristen, you do have the possibility of um, signing up again if you're interested. Not going to put you on the spot. I know. I mean, we did talk about this last time. I do worry that I just have other conflicts that keep coming up in the afternoon, particularly with my coaching. Well, you know, there is always the possibility that we'll change the meeting. I guess if we have new members, um, you know, our needs may change overall. Talk to our select board liaison who just walked in the room about the need for new members. <laughs> and we have a chair's breakfast tomorrow morning at nine o'clock. We can raise that issue. Okay. This is Matt Johnson, who was our new select board representative. Hi. Hi. Good to meet you all. And sorry I'm late. Well, I'm just late, uh, so I should sit in the back anyway. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm really happy to be able to join in here. I have to say, of all the different parts of the town that I've had experience with, I've really left out so far the Council on Aging, so I, I'm, I'm really interested in learning more. Um, I have actually parents who live in Concord, as well as my mother-in-law, who regularly uses the uh, COA bus to go to uh, Trader Joe's. And so I'm, I'm beginning to learn from the client side as well a little bit. But uh, also, I'm just here to be a resource. So, you know, to the extent that you need help, uh, for example, with new members, uh, getting nominations and appointments done, but also to the extent that you want to bring anything to the select board or the town, 
that needs attention, um, certainly uh, let me know. And uh, likewise, uh, we may come to you and ask for help on something on an occasion. So uh, that's about it. it. Unless you have more for me now, I'll just really listen in on what you're up to. But again, I was uh, at work, so I just raced over as soon as I was able. And uh, depending on the meeting time, I may or may not be able to attend that often, but it's not really essential that I be present. It's much more essential that I be a resource uh, when you need it. Okay. okay, thank you. Well, we do need new board members. So anything you can do to help us recruit, that would be great. Okay. Um, so what we typically do is, you know, there are volunteer cards that are submitted online in the town. So what I will ask the uh, town staff to do is to provide to me, and I don't know if you've already asked for this, but to provide the list of any, uh, you know, residents who have submitted and indicated the COA as one of their top choices. Mm -hmm. And uh, We'll see if we can come up with some immediate candidates that way. Clearly in your own networks, you know, if there's anybody you can think of, uh, let me know of that as well. And we'll try to get them to submit a, a volunteer card. Okay. And I just want to say that I think it is important to try to be at the meetings when you can. I because, will if I can. Because yeah. it, you also can take things to them and you can express the stuff we're concerned about, but also you will be able to say things that we are not aware of that the select board might impact upon something we're talking about. Uh -huh. um, so that it's been really helpful this year, I think, and last year, we had very good re representation uh -huh. from the select board, someone coming to the meeting and there was a real back and forth with that, um, and so okay. Yeah, I, I would I would think it's important to try to be present when you can. I will try. Okay. Very good. Uh, the other thing is that next month will be our last meeting for the year because we take July and August off, and we will be voting on new officers. I do hope to step down as chair, and if Kristen doesn't come back, then we, we lose our secretary too. So um, think about whether you could serve in this capacity. Uh, Rod, you had said last year that you would consider being chair. I did, but I didn't anticipate uh, having moving my mom off the list to full time and being full time responsible for her okay. chair. Okay. So, um, Struggling just to fulfill my responsibilities as a board member right now. Okay. I haven't had much full time care for as I've assisted my mother in law, but now I'm doing it. It's fantastic. It's also a logistical challenge to schedule and make sure. So my brother is with my mom right now, so I can be here. And that's fantastic to have that kind of family support. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure that I. Okay. Right, I got working with Terry has been fantastic about getting these articles. And one of them has taken much, much longer because of my inability to find the time to get things done. So I, I'm afraid. I'm afraid I'm kind of disappointed. Okay. I was a caregiver for many years. I understand. I gave up my job because I couldn't do both. Um, I understand. I'm not surprised. Okay. We will carry on. All right. Um, so, Rod, Terry, do you have anything to add about your articles? Because I think Ginger has reviewed and. We've got three, three finals, and we're hoping to get the other three over to Ginger and you for the final um, uh, in the next month. Uh, just because of schedules, Terry and I are meeting this Thursday instead of previous uh, weeks. Uh, to uh, confirm which media outlets where each of us are going to go for the articles. And for our two visitors uh, today, that these are articles that we have 
uh, written about uh, the Council's uh, Beijing uh, response to COVID and various elements of COVID. So we finished, uh, we, we have a final uh, in which we've talked about transport, we talked about clinical and social services, and we have one in which we talk about sort of uh, one-off uh, game activities and its impact on uh, the social network that each of the participants has, has generated and how one struggled and came up with uh, adjustments and responses to the, to the uh, to the pandemic. And I'll just uh, flat out say, uh, this group responded magnificently. Uh, Ginger and her colleagues responded magnificently uh, during this, uh, this period. And if there's one, uh, and so we're gonna get these six articles out. Uh, we're gonna get them into whatever media will accept them. Uh, originally, we were thinking about uh, getting these articles published once a month. We may adjust that just to get the, the story out. But I, I think there's, this led me to, if there's one activity that I feel very strongly about getting, after getting this done, is that this experience needs to be recorded. And I'm uh, just tempted to go to the town, get that device where people can speak and it automatically transcribes words into text and just get it down. And then somebody can start pulling it all together. But, the things that people have done here have been fantastic. You know, and it just needs to be, we need to have a record of it because we're going to have another one. Are you familiar with the oral history project that the library conducts? Uh, yes, but that's not what I have in mind here. Okay. What I have in mind here is basically a data dump. I want the town to have a record of everything that was done by the Council of Aging because it it can, some of these things can be applied in the future. And maybe people will be inspired enough by that to then turn around and say, well, we ought to interview our department members, like the police or the fire department or whatever, and just find out what they did and capture that information before people leave to move to better jobs or retire or whatever. Why not take advantage of that expertise that was so dearly earned or, or you know so costly earned uh, during this this period with the personal sacrifice that people made anyway that's two and questions first what media platforms are you considering at this point anyone that will take these stories so i okay second thing is do you want me to interview on tv <laughs> i could do this i could make this happen well look, we should, a 20 to 30 minute segment we could we talk about it we want. could talk uh, Let's talk afterwards. But okay. right now, we're struggling with just getting our task that we you know, identified, uh, uh, which was getting these six articles. Could it lead to something else? Possibly. But right now, we're going to focus on the job. I think. Yes. <laughs> Terms like, don't volunteer for any other <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So that's, that's where we are. But we're delighted with the feedback we've gotten uh, from Ginger. We've got our uh, final draft. We've got our photos. And we're and we're near. Uh, so though we have three finals and three drafts, some of which are final, some of which are nearly final. We're getting the photos, and apologies that it's taken longer than we thought, but it's coming together. Sounds like you've done a really thorough job and really put your heart and soul into it. Really it's been a good experience to uh, meet the people and hear their stories and uh, do some translation. And uh, it's, uh, it's been a good partnership on the team to, uh, to get through it all. But I think it's, um, I think it's a worthwhile project. And I, I think there's a lot that's going on right now in the department and, uh, here at the facility. Um, and I think the, from a, From a media perspective, um, I think that there are opportunities for using the activities and uh, the opportunities that the Council of Aging provides um, that more people in town should hear about and know about. And I think that that's 
it could be an opportunity for putting it on the calendar. Communication. I've, I've heard about the communication, but I've never seen it. Or, but it would be something that could be considered. I think. Happy to show you anytime, Terry. I was just going to say, I thought to your point, Terry, the staff enjoyed meeting a couple of board members. The staff doesn't know anybody on the board. You know, they don't interact with the board at all. I'm the only one that does. And I think that was a nice experience for them. And my, I gather from the two of you that each of you felt like you learned a lot more about oh, yeah. what we Absolutely. do by actually coming here during the day and sitting with some staff and learning about their roles. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of value beyond the education that you'll be doing for the community when these articles get published. Um, there was value in you as board members learning more about the inner workings Absolutely. of the COA. And so we maybe as a springboard is maybe there's not more articles, but maybe we need to find formalize having board members who have the ability to do that come spend the day at the COA or something like that where they they do get to meet the staff. They do get to have better sense of what's going on here and have a greater understanding of our role and our mission. And I think that's something that came out of that project. Absolutely. Yeah. I just have one question about a publication you mentioned that I hadn't heard of um, called the Concord Bridge. What is that? That was, there was talk about setting up a Newspaper competitor to the Concord Journal, but it's still a ways off. Or it was a furniture stage. Yeah. So, so we had hoped that it was further along, but still talk to people about it. Um, as we said, we're, we're going to go with uh, print, internet. And, and sometimes these it, things yeah. have to be uh, modified for a different, like if you're going to put something in. Action limited or action unlimited, I forget about which kind of group, but you know, that's the sort of thing that maybe they won't take a photo, or maybe they need a shorter article. So, the, the actual putting of the articles into different media will be another job in itself. Okay. Maybe um, we make up you and say, maybe we want to put in senior spirit. You know, I was going to say in the newsletter, in or the newsletter. yeah, um, yeah. but that's preaching to the Choir. Everybody here knows how well everything. I think the people who were involved in, in uh, activities here know how well you've done. Mm -hmm. so, but it's nice to hear it again. So. No, well, uh, there, it, just having it in print exactly. and then uh, yeah. holding on to it and showing it to people uh, over the years. So it's, it's a record. It's, but that's extra. That's not the intention. The intention is get it out to yeah. the town and get the camera on and talk to journalists. Say, Look, Content is mediocre. So here's a way of you know, raising the, the, the quality of your content. Here's six consecutive articles about some pretty amazing people who did some pretty amazing things. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, you, know, you could sell them whether they buy it. Or, okay. is, is there any connection between the select committee and the, the communications? Uh, media that you're talking about? Absolutely. So, uh, the one I'm talking about is the Good Event Media Network, the town's TV station. And my committee is a job is to advise the select board, and they kind of control all of us. So, yeah, it's a good connection. Yeah. And what, what I'm doing is I just found out today I've been granted permission to start um, lining up a program for a local news TV program at the filmed at the studio, at, which is in the high school. And I've asked a couple folks already to see if they're interested in being a guest. So I uh, basically ask questions and we chat about in 15, 20 minutes. So it will be recorded, to be posted on the YouTube channel, and will also be broadcast on uh, the cable TV channel number eight, which is the public channel. And that's supposed to start. Yeah. Channels eight, nine, and 99 are involved and tune in on them every once in a while and see what's there. It's hard to find out exactly what's on each day, but uh, the Demand Media Network does have a web page and they 
each day they put the uh, programming on, but it's not a form of TV. So, Mom and I are partial. <laughs> well, maybe uh, if we finish this, this would, it would be great to interview with Terry to possibly meet together. Just to summarize, let's yeah. let's let's chat. But we've got to get this done for tonight. Go ahead. Thank you. I'm hoping in the future that we keep articles going on because I think there's probably a lot of topics that could be covered about senior living. So once you finish your series on COVID, not that it would ever finish, but you know, I, I could see us continuing on with articles down the road. And we did have that at one point. There was a board member whose job on the board, if you will, was to produce an article every month. Um, he would come and interview me on various topics, and he would write an article and submit it. And so, so the, there the is German. a precedent for doing that. It's just having a volunteer that's um, comfortable with writing and taking that on. And that was for the spirit or for the fun journal? For the journal. For the journal. And then the articles The spirit doesn't have a lot of room, honestly. It is. Yeah, the chart full cool. so of every going. activity that mm -hmm. we have going on. So, mm -hmm. the only way to do something like what you're describing is probably to do an insert um, because there's there's literally no room, even though it's a 12 page newsletter. It's so full of what we do here that there's not a lot of extra room, but doesn't mean we couldn't do an insert. Well, Just got to find more like volunteers. You're looking for articles as opposed to the but it would right. be fine for you know if you want to do that no. we can talk about that after you get it out to the to the local media. That's it. Okay, so we're coming up on oh you know we don't talk about ARPA. One meeting we came up with suggestions for how to use the ARPA fund. We never really talked about it after that. Well, I think the select board might yeah, have so something to say about that. I can talk about kind of where we arrived with the ARPA funds uh, discussion. And it was that um, we're planning to spread the spending for the ARPA funds out over the next four years, uh, which is uh, allowed by the federal government. And the goal is to as much as possible, include ARPA spending in the regular town uh, budget and you know, capital spending plans so that the uh, voters are able to weigh in on these expenses. I think that if you look at ARPA, one of its risks is that it didn't have any controls over the funds. And so, you know, any government representative uh, could, you know, town manager technically could just decide that uh, it's 5.6 million. I, I, I like this, I'm gonna spend it on that. I mean, there were some some rules, but the, uh, the government said that as long as your total was less than, I think, 8 million, that you could just declare that the reason that you needed to spend was that you lost that much revenue. They didn't even need you to add it up. Just that you, they, they, took it for granted that you lost that much revenue during COVID. And so you could just spend the money as part of town spending. So what we are doing is for this current year, where it's too late to incorporate budgetary spending, the town manager is putting together a proposal of her, her spending priorities, which we on the select board will review in, in the beginning of June. So uh, that's happening. So for example, last night, we had a proposal uh, from our Bureau, uh, town Department of Planning and Land Management to have a summer pilot of a shuttle running for uh, tourists around the tourist sites of town on a continuous basis during the day. Uh, now, Again, the, the board has not deliberated on that. I don't, I don't think even the town manager is quite decided, but that's an example of the kind of things. We had another one, which was uh, the proposal for uh, 
uh, some extra money for the first responders in town, uh, just because of everything they went through in COVID. So that's another thing that I've heard offered. So we will see what her uh, priorities are in June, but that's that's where we've landed so far. Okay. That's an approach. So will it be an annual thing? So over the next four years? No, so in the future, that, that money is just going to get folded into the budget. You know, essentially, <laughs> we've got more money. You know, we have taxes, tax revenues, but we would also have this ARPA money. Mm -hmm. And then we would be making our overall town plans for capital spending and uh, expenses, you know, based upon the, that money being available. Mm -hmm. So it's just a little boost, if you will. Uh, to our budget that we could otherwise have. Okay. So there aren't going to be opportunities for the council. Or well, there, there again, what it does is it kind of raises the tide for all boats. Mm -hmm. So now there are more opportunities to fund projects in town than there would have been. It's just that they're not earmarked specifically to the park. That that's the idea. Okay. So we had had a discussion uh, several months ago about. And Ginger had told me, I, my question was, had ARPA money seemed like a great idea to, to improve uh, safety and so ventilation, filtration, CO2 monitors. Ginger informed me that basically this was under control here mm -hmm. in Oregon dealt with. Has it been dealt with every other department? I mean, are the police in the buildings with public works? Are they working in safe environments with respect to what's known about the needs for ventilation and air exchange, things like that? I, I, I don't, don't know. To, don't I don't know the it. answer to that. I do question. know that as we have new construction projects, those are certainly issues that, so for example, the middle school building project mm -hmm. that is current, you know, that's been a, a right. long discussion of like, if, what is the number? Yeah of exchanges of air per hour that, you know, we're going to have for that building. Right. And should we change the standard from the past, you know, for the future due to COVID? Yeah, that's not what I asked. Okay. What I asked was the people who do the work right now in the buildings that we have, are they working in a safe environment? Right. That's I, the question. I can't comment yeah. on the specific. But that would be something because we asked, because we asked here was this, Particularly because this population is at risk. Yeah. Uh, especially at risk. Is this considered a safe environment for bringing people back in? And Ginger assured us that it that everything that can be done is being done, and that's fan, and that was fantastic that Ginger and her staff were already ahead of this this game. Yeah. So I mean, I think the reason I brought up new projects is that some of those aspects are kind of fundamental to the architecture of the building like you know the ability to exchange the air in a building it's you it's hard to retrofit once you have built it let's not go down that rabbit hole if you could tell me that a person who's worked for 30 years at the department of public works has to take on additional risk because it's an old building i don't think we want to talk about that that, that way we want to do what we can yes and and I and I know you feel this way because yeah. I listened to you talking about our fund expenditures. So just making a case that, um, it's, to me, it's unfortunate that, the, that that people aren't just saying, "Okay, we have this capital fund, which was generated by the COVID relief, and we're not necessarily going to do things. We're folding it into the general town budget as opposed to it's there. Let's do things to make." Things say for based on what we know from the previous COVID experience and what we anticipate will happen with future communicable diseases. So anyway, it's just a it's just a point. Yeah, it's just that there are many organizations that have similar kinds of priorities, absolutely. and that's absolutely. where we found ourselves. No, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I'm sure they must have done something. If you go to the library, you'll see they have special air handlers. To yes. purify the air. So I'm sure that all town buildings probably have something similar or another. Right. Caroline, I'm just asking a question and I would like a definitive answer from the town. That's all. Why don't you email the town manager? Yeah. That's the next step. That's the next step. Or I can ask Matt to ask him. Too. <laughs> okay. Um, comments from guests. 
Catherine. Tell us about yourself. <laughs> sure. Um, I'm a new resident to Concord. I moved here late last summer with my family. And the reason why I filled out one of those cards at my very first town meeting was because I'm a geriatrician. And I figured I might have some skills that would be useful to the group. You figured right. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, I know nothing about town politics, town governance, you know, stuff like that. So I had to kind of look at what, see what a selectman was. And, um, you know, this, um, and so, uh, so this was all very eye opening. And, you know, maybe I, I can be of service in various different ways. It doesn't have to be on the board. Maybe I could be a guest from time to time. I'm just, you know, I, I'm sort of a deer in headlights right now. I, I have no idea what I, I may have volunteered for. So, um, so, so, um, but I, I'm happy to be of service because I, you know, this is my population. I think everyone comes here thinking, what do I have to offer? <laughs> And everybody has something to offer. They have a different perspective. And just being here, I can say this is a great board to be on because we act as liaisons for a lot of other town boards and committees and report back. So you learn a lot. The last couple of years, our select board representative has been very active in coming to our meetings. So we heard a lot about the select board as well. So, you know, it's, it's really been an educational experience for me. And I think everyone on the board has enjoyed how we do things and what we've learned. So, <laughs> well, oh, thank you. Thank you. I'll just mention that um, often when we have um, a prospective new member, mm -hmm. I have met with them one on one mm -hmm. to just delve in a little deeper about uh, the COA and what we do and sort of how I work with the board and give you a tour, et cetera. And I would be more than happy to to do that for you if we can find a time when you're available to sure. do that. You know, I don't know what your schedule is like, but would would love to do that for you. Thank you. I love that. Um, okay, Carlin Reed. I've already told I'm the chair of the pay access committee. That may be why I can't also join this committee at the same time. But I certainly can come to the meetings mm -hmm. and give updates as necessary. I've been really thrilled having Carol be the liaison, the council agent liaison to my committee because I think a third of our of our viewer base is over the age of 60. Very popular in the So you're the target audience and I want to please you. I want to put programming on that television stations and up on YouTube that you'll want to watch. But to do that I have to know and that's why it's useful for us to have a liaison at our meetings because Carol's been giving us great feedback. We're going, going both ways with the studio stuff. So when she leaves, find someone to replace her spot. Okay. Can't replace her, I know that, but now yeah, you can't. No. <laughs> and I missed your committee? Uh, it's called the Peg Access Advisory Committee. It's the citizen group that works with the town's uh, TV studio. Okay, thank you. Anyone else have any comments? Kristen, Christina? You're so quiet over there. All right, I just had one question. Who is who was just speaking oh, from Pet Access? It's, it's Carlin, K-A-R-L-E-N, R-E-E-D. Yes, right. Okay, now I remember your name, right. Any other questions? Anything else? June 21, next meeting. Um, last one of the year, perhaps a little party for those that are leaving. <laughs> I think so. Maybe there'll be some cake, <laughs> something like that. You don't want to miss your own party. <laughs> <laughs> I will try to be here. Okay. Okay. Well, I have to vote to adjourn the meeting. Make a motion that we adjourn. Second. Well, did you get that, Kristen? So Carol made a motion. Rod second. Okay. Michael. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Um, Patty. Yes. Terry. Yes. 
Carol Ann, yes. And Miss uh, uh, Kristen? Yep. And Christina? Yes. Okay, meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone.